Jeff Stearns, Connected Through Cars, part two of George Wallace. I'm so proud to call him my dear friend. I really like the guy. He's so humble. He did an amazing job. He brought Rolls-Royce to a culture of profitability after generational culture of losing money. And listen to hear the Mike Tyson story. <laughs> I really hope Mike doesn't look him up after this. Enjoy. Please comment below. Subscribe. Enjoy. I hope Mike Tyson never sees this. <laughs> Big picture of the, of the Phantom and an all smashed up front of the car. He didn't have it a week. There's not a lot of people who know the story. They also knew that if we didn't agree to the deal, that they couldn't build cars. They didn't have engines. Jeff Stearns, connected through cars. If they're bigwigs, we'll have them on the show. And yes, we'll talk about cars and everything else. Here he is now, Jeff Stearns. And you opened the door to this commercial area warehouse. And it's absolutely stunning inside. It's like the bat cave. You have no idea outside to inside. So you really underplayed how amazing, what a job you guys did. You deserved all the orders you got. You walked into uh, the first room and it was fine furniture and champagne and, and you know, the best cookies. Or, and we'd give the client a presentation by Merrick Georgievich, the individual who designed the car. And that was, I mean, they were just wowed. So Merrick and I had this, this routine back and forth between the two of us and he'd do the technical stuff and I'd do the cosmetic stuff. And then after the presentation, which was probably 45 minutes, we walked down some steps lit by candles and there was a big circular curtain and some music, very sophisticated opera music would begin. The curtain would open in the dark. So you'd see, you knew there was a car there, the shape of it, but you didn't know anything more than the shape. This was a real production. I mean, it was, then the lights come on and there's the car. Uh, I, I had a guy cry one time, you know, when he when he saw the car and, and the whole the, the emotion of the whole thing. So, if you think about it, I mean, now we're used to seeing Phantoms. I mean, they're beautiful cars, no doubt about it, and the Rolls Royce line. But if you think about the departure from the Phantom from the Square Silver Spur or the the short oh. run Silver Seraph, uh, it was times a hundred. I mean, it was like a coach built. Back to, and um, what did you have on your car list? What was your 65? Silver Cloud. Your 65 Cloud. This, the new Phantom was really back to that coach building and back. And then when Merrick, the designer, would sit there with the renderings and explain with the tools and gauges how the height of the body was X amount of wheels in height because that's what it was in the 20s and 30s and, you know, et cetera. It was, imagine sitting there and getting that kind of a treatment. And it was really perfect that you were in this terrible commercial area because the setup. It's such a wow. Yeah, you'd walk through the door and it was like knockout, really. It was a fabulous job. I mean, if you were part of that planning, terrific. Now, this pin that I'm wearing on my lapel, I don't know if it shows up here in the camera or not. I'll get a picture of it on the screen if it's not visible. I remember. And I have the box here to it. And I remember when you gave it to me, it may have been forgetting a high number of people to come to the room. Rolls and Bentley, and let me explain this to the listening audience. Expensive car, a couple hundred grand, a few hundred grand. Like you might be thinking, oh my God, I mean, how much money do they make on a car? But for things like safety and homologation and quality issues, even like if, if the cheapest Chevrolet or the cheapest Kia has a rattle, they can throw engineers in $10 million at the rattle with the volume of cars that they're doing to get it squared away. When you're doing a few hundred 
of a model for the world. You can't really throw money and people at it. And with the volume, profitability was short. And I'm sure that you from the inside saw um, inefficiencies too. We started a culture. Whatever we had to do to make it right. I'll give you an example. We had a guy who was a big produce grower in Florida and he was getting married, but the car had to be there by a certain date. We flew when the car was finished to, to get there in time for the wedding. We flew, it was 10 grand, uh, fly the car over and be ready for the wedding. I mean, we did things like that often. I remember the 10 grand express shipping option. At, well, you did what Rolls-Royce should do. As a matter of fact, Rolls-Royce's version, just so we can relate to it, of OnStar in a General Motors car, and I'm sure a lot of makes have some version of it, is a button in the car that if there's an accident with an airbag deployment, for example, it alerts the authorities and it puts a, a speaker into the car. Are you okay? Do you need any other kind of help? You know, et cetera. And you can push it to get directions and you can push it to get a little bit of concierge kind of help. Rolls-Royce, if I recall, contracted either the same center or actually used American Express, but you use the same team as American Express black card to assist the people pushing the button in their car, right? Yes. And this wouldn't be just airbag deployment assistance or making a reservation. This would be getting you into the restaurant that doesn't have an opening <laughs> for a reservation. Another example that actually relates to you. You brought a guy to the closed room and his initials were RR. The most important thing to this guy was, and he's a prior Rolls Royce owner, and I won't say his name because I'm not, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't do that, but we, we both know who we're talking about. I know who you mean. The first cars to come off the line didn't have the hub RR, which always, when you stop, the RR was always straight up and down. And the first couple that came in, his car didn't have it. And we flew the right one over from England and put, put them on the car for him, which was not inexpensive, but made him happy. Well, it's, it's really the right thing to do with that brand. And it's funny, we won't mention his name, but do you remember the white tie event? The white tie event. I think it was in England. Oh, yes. Yes, for the grand opening. And you allowed us to invite a certain number of people. And that Robert, we can say Robert, wanted to go. And I wasn't sure how many invitations I can get or if any, if it was the size of the dealer. I don't remember what it was. But he was actually, when he heard about it, and we told him about it, and we were trying to get the ticket. True story. He was actually going to get his white tie tuxedo or evening suit and pose as a waiter ah. and go anyway with or without an invite. And I think that in the end, we didn't need to do it, but I'm not, I'm not saying this as a shtick, like, Hey, if I don't get an invite, I'm going to go do this. Like we were plotting, like, where's the restaurant? What's the entrances? I mean, it was like putting together a bank robbery until we got them in legitimate. So George, now, if you don't mind, do you mind if I come back to the, VW and BMW buyout of Rolls and Bentley. Is it okay to talk about that? Yeah. Okay. And if anything's in confidentiality or. No, I, there's not a lot of people who know the story. It, it was a very complex legal story. So Vickers puts Rolls and Bentley up for sale from your earlier story in our recorded conversation here, you said that BMW already had a relationship with them because they'd lent the money, had some stock. They were a shareholder in the company. But it turned into, from what appeared to me, reading automotive news and what was going on, some sort of bidding war between BMW and VW to get Rolls and Bentley. Yeah. And um, I think Volkswagen had bid for Rolls Royce up to like... I'm looking it up. VW purchase of... I'll just say Bentley. <laughs> so this says on Investopedia, I don't know if it's correct, so you can tell me. Volkswagen went on a sports car buying spree in 98, first scooping up Lamborghini. And during that year, it also paid $790 million for Bentley 
and an estimated 50 million for Bugatti. Sound right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So VW pays nearly 800 million for what they thought was Rolls and Bentley. Correct or incorrect? That's correct. Okay, catch us up now. So behind the scenes, Sir Ralph uh, Robbins, Everhard von Kuhnheim is the chairman of BMW, uh, get together uh, with a room full of attorneys and work out the structure of a purchase. And there were two things that went in the favor of this deal going through. One is that BMW owned a portion of Rolls-Royce PLC. Now that's Rolls-Royce PLC is the aero engine company. At the same time, there was part of the agreement with Vickers and Rolls-Royce PLC, who controlled the name Rolls-Royce, that in their contract with Vickers, it said that if they ever wanted to sell the Rolls-Royce motor car company, that they had to sell it back to the company Rolls-Royce PLC, who licensed the name to them. So that's, in essence, the two most significant things that almost required Rolls-Royce PLC to sell it to BMW. Okay, so I'm definitely not hiring you as a storyteller. Thanks. (laughs) VW and BMW are bidding and VW pays nearly 800 million for Rolls and Bentley. They thought they bought Rolls and Bentley and they did other than they didn't get the trademark grill and flying lady as part of the deal because that was owned by Rolls Royce aerospace making the jet engines. Yes. But remember that we had BMW had an agreement to supply the engines to Volkswagen for the crew built cars. Right. But VW, when they paid 790, did not know they weren't going to end up with a grill and flying lady. They also knew that if we didn't agree to the deal, that they couldn't build cars. They didn't have engines. I mean, the due diligence that was missed to know that they were going to pay, because in the end, BMW came, if I'm not mistaken, and scooped up the trademark, Grill and Flying Lady, and they, that was Rolls-Royce. That's all they got. Rolls-Royce PLC said that it would sell the Rolls-Royce auto brand name for $66 million to BMW, which plans to create a new Rolls-Royce company. Meanwhile, Volkswagen AG will keep the old Rolls-Royce factory it just bought and continue producing the Bentley line of luxury cars. That's from CBS News in 98. But some heads had to roll at VW. Did you get to hear any of that, or were you because no. you're isolated in BMW? No, but you know, culturally, when something like this happens at a German company, the first thing they do is decide who's going to get the finger pointed at them. George, I can't tell you how much I appreciate. I've got a senior executive of BMW on my podcast. I mean. Who could be better? Maybe Mick Jagger. I'm just an average senior executive. Wonderful to see you. I've always admired you. I hope we stay in touch. Thank you very much. That's unbelievably kind coming from you. This has been Jeff Stearns, Connected Through Cars.